How's it going? <laughs> I can't do this. If you're my bank, you might be wondering, why'd you spend so much money on a bunch of fire brick? Well, today we're gonna be building an electric foundry. You might be saying, dude, you already got a propane foundry, why do you need two foundries? Well, let me show you. My other foundry is all the way out there. Now, I'm not about to brave the elements to go get it. Really the reason why I want to make an electric foundry is I can use it inside, it's a lot quieter, and I don't gotta buy propane every time I want to use it. Just solving first world problems here. So we're gonna be making a cube foundry here as opposed to the many, many circular ones that you may have seen. And really that is because I want to use the thick end of the brick as an insulator without using too many bricks because they're expensive. A pretty simple design, it's just a box. I'm gonna be laying the bricks like so. The whole thing will be framed in with angle iron. It'll have a cantilever lid just because I think that's cool. And then the electronics are gonna be off on a little post on the side over here. So the heating coil I'm gonna use will expand every time it gets hot. So I don't wanna just notch it along the side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a router and put a notch in each brick like so with just enough room shaved down on the front to allow the heat to get into the furnace. I stopped by the old Harbor Freight. Got me a router table. We'll see how long it takes for me to ruin this thing. Got our table and a router. Harbor Freight! So I've clamped this miter thingy in place here as another fence so that I can run these like so and I'll have my channel that should match up perfectly with the rest of them. Just like that. So the heating coil will be inside of here and I'll just knock this down with a file or something. Yeah, you know, I'm a real dummy. When I got this, I thought it looked like the wrong stuff. I open it, it's black, another red flag. Finally, I put these together and I'm reading this to see how long I need to wait for it to cure. And it, this is the wrong stuff, man. I need refractory cement. Stupid. Well, see you in a week. Here we are a week later. Finally got the right stuff. And I think it's worth preparing the wires before actually assembling this thing. So we're gonna do that real quick. To hook these coils up to the electricity, I'm bending a straight section at 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna stitch on some of this nichrome wire. In order to make sure these little extensions are as little resistive as possible, I'm just gonna twist together three of them and then stitch them on to our coils. Look at that, beautiful. That took much longer than expected, but I got all my coils with little danglers on the end. So now I think the smart thing to do before we encase them in mortar forever is to test them. All right, I got this thing mocked up basically the way it'll be laid out inside the forge. Although much jankier, let's do this. So this is taking forever. We're gonna need more amps. I'll try it with the electronic thingy that I got. I think that that'll push more amps through it. If that doesn't work, we're just gonna hook the whole thing up to 240 volts. But you can see the coils are getting a little bit more discolored than the rest of the nichrome wire. So I think everything's working. We're good to mortar this thing together. Whenever you're mixing mortar, you want it to be able to stick on the trowel when you hold it at a 90 degree angle. Don't get yelled at by your foreman. Well, this 
is as boring as watching mortar drying. You got the lid together, got the furnace together, and boy oh boy is it ugly. So I'm gonna try and stucco it. I don't know how it's gonna work with this refractory material. And I kind of made a soupy mix here, so might not work at all. Look at that, beautiful. Now we let it dry for five hours. So while we wait for that thing to dry, I figure I'm going to start getting the electronics enclosure put together because nothing wastes time quite like working on electronics I don't understand. I've gone ahead and cut these couple pieces out on the plasma cutter. Let's get them bent up, welded up, and then we can start wiring it. Cut this little chunk out as a standoff, and I realized I didn't clean any of the edges of these boxes before welding, so I wonder how much of that had to do with my awful welds. Look at that. Oh yeah, we got some warpage for sure. It'll fix itself when I bolt it on, right? We got ourselves a lid. Let's get this thing painted before we install the electronics. All right, got my parts painted. I'm using this high heat paint. We'll see how high of heat that can take. Now we can install the PID. It comes with this helpful little diagram on the side that makes no sense whatsoever. I assume these go to the solid state relay. Power in is here but who knows which one's hot and which one's neutral. <laughs> no ground on it. It looks like these two terminals are shorted and I assume those go to the thermocouple. So we're just crossing our fingers hoping that that's how this thing works. You don't need to watch this. Just a little side note here, get yourself a Heiko soldering iron. I know you, man. I know you're on your third piece of trash soldering iron from the Home Depot. This is literally the cheapest good tool you can ever buy. Worth every penny. Got it all wired up. Pay no mind to the jumble of mismatched colors. That's the wire I had. Let's give it a test. Ho ho ho! Ta-da! Seems to be working. Now we can Put the cover on and forget about that mess inside. All right, we can start framing this thing out with angle iron. I think the first thing we gotta do is a little bit of a shimmy shimmy here. Is the fire brick will wear itself down and then that way we know we have two perfectly mating surfaces. So these guys go right... So these guys go right in these notches here, and it's gonna encase the entire thing all the way around. And we're gonna MIG weld this because I want to, not because I'm an idiot and left my bottle of Argon open all night and it all drained out. These are not cut at 45. <laughs> oh, why do I do this to myself? see by my nice matchup here this lid's gonna take me quite a while to finish and I figure why don't we harness that time by allowing some JB weld to cure so to deal with this dangly mess here 
we're going to have these ceramic terminal blocks mounted on here and in order to do that i'm just going to set a screw into some epoxy then i can fasten this to it just with a nut on the other side the camera died but i got these all installed now we just gotta wait for that jb well to set up Now you know what it looks like? It looks like a chest in Minecraft. Oh God, what have I done? Well, you might be able to tell by how haggard I'm looking that I've had a heck of a time. Since the last shot, the top broke. You see those cracks? So for the past hour, <laughs> <laughs> hour for the past three hours i've been i took this thing apart i remortared it i let it dry i put it all back together i scrapped that sheet metal on the side as you can see and it's just got angle iron on the corners i think that looks a whole lot cooler so silver linings we're back on track now we can get our hinges welded on Oh, I suppose that's another thing I should explain. In the CAD model, I didn't add these little ceramic terminal blocks that I put on here. And with those in place, I can't have the cantilever top. So we're going with hinges. Now we're back on track. I think that's about it for the welding. Oh, hold on. The finishing touch. Look at that. Look at this freaking thing. Beautiful. So we can start by hooking up these coils to their appropriate spots just to get them out of my way. These are being hooked up in series, I believe. <laughs> Now we can hook our PID up to the coils, install this plate, put in the thermocouple, and we're good to go, man. After a whole lot of head scratching later, I've decided this is the best spot for the thermocouple. So we gotta pull this thing off, drill that hole out, and then drill a hole right into the middle of the furnace. You can see in there, the probe is tucked right up against the wall within an inch from the bottom of the furnace. So I think that's gonna work out pretty good. So I went ahead and I built the crucible off camera. It just sits in these couple notches I put in the foundry, like so. I shamelessly copied this off of Made in Poland's design. I, I think it's his design, I don't I don't know if he shamelessly copied it. You pull it out with this tool, and then there's a little hook on the back. You stick this tool in, and then, whoa! Then you can dump it. So now, ain't much to do but to fire it up. Boop! So the light for out is on. Already smells bad. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll check back with you in a second. Six and a half hours later. Quite a bit of tinkering later, I finally got this thing working. You can see out the back here, we're hooked up to 240 volts. The coils just weren't getting hot enough on 110. Boop. You can see the coils are getting nice and toasty now. I got a couple chunks of random pieces of aluminum I had laying around. Let's cook them. All right, we're reading 708C. That's well above the melting point of aluminum. Let's take a little peeky poo. I don't see the tube anymore. Oh yeah, don't drop the camera. Give it another second. Still 709. Look at that. This is when it all goes horribly wrong. We did it, man! Look at that beautiful aluminum. 
Obviously my pouring technique leaves a little bit to be desired, but normally this will be on the ground. I won't be panicking over top my workbench. Uh, what are the final results here? 130 Fahrenheit, not bad. 223 Fahrenheit, a little toasty, but not that bad considering. The electrical box, nice. <laughs> We did it, man, it works great. So from where it was sitting with the pre-burn, if that's what we're gonna call it, which was about 230 degrees Celsius, it got up to 700 degrees Celsius within 30 minutes, which is great. We'll see in the future how long it takes from nothing, but man, I'm very pleased with the results, man. This was a fun project. Have my fair share of headaches with this one but I couldn't be happier with the end product. If you made it this far, maybe smash that liker. Think about subscribing and thank you so much for watching. Oh